This is the Bitcoin one month overview reading for the month of March 2024. It's currently January 23rd, 2024, 1030 p.m. Eastern Time. Bitcoin at the time of this reading is currently $39,609.50. That's USD. And the shuffle video for the Bitcoin March reading was created on January 8th, 2024 at 837 p.m. Eastern Time. That's this video here in the lower left corner. So the overall theme and behavior for Bitcoin in March, the Prince of Swords indicates a lot of vol price change and vol volatility throughout the month. It's crossed with the Peace card, which is interesting. So at some point, there will be a point, like an important price level that we um, have all volume and volatility kind of like flatten out at that price level, at least momentarily, based on the correlations to two low cards here. I'd say it's probably an important price level on, to, the, to the downside there where we kind of flatten out at least momentarily. Behavior around the highest high for the month, we have the disappointment card or a failed attempt to break through key resistance, but it's, it's, it's significant in that this failed attempt to break through key resistance, everybody will be expecting us to break through. Usually what happens is we have an attempt at resistance, then we, we fail, and then there's a falsely established support followed by the disappointment attempt, which is because we falsely established support, everybody thinks we're breaking through, but instead we turn around, we might poke through momentarily, but then we turn around and we break through that falsely established support. That's almost always with the disappointment card. Yeah, so we should see that near the higher highs. And what's important to understand is that th there'll be a sharp universal drop off of that high the, the high there, the disappointment card is also uh, significant in its cross reading congruency, which I'll talk about in more detail on the paid version when we're looking at that the portion where we're, de we're determining where the March reading falls into the greater uh, pattern that we've looked at on a multi year standpoint. Favor around the low, this will be an, a significant opportunity uh, uh, that'll stand out amongst other lows throughout the year of March. Um, the full card is usually an improbable opportunity, or it's usually like a high, a highest high or lowest low, or some sort of really unique opportunity that'll really stand out. So we'll talk about that again in more detail on the paid version. But between the full card and the low and the uh, universal card in the high, I would say there's there's a there's a significant amount of price change uh, to the downside here. The whole purpose of the channel is to transmute some of the competitive energy of the stock market into goodwill. We do that by following the rule of karma for the channel. You go to the resources tab of our website, Terra for Traders, and 5% of the profits from every profitable trade utilizing this information should be donated forward to one of these charities, or pick a charity of your choosing as long as you're paying 5% forward, and then 5% should be sent back to the channel through one of these links. If you're international, you can use Wise or you can use YouTube tips. And that leaves you at 90%. Make sure to spend that 90% out of love. As long as you follow those rules, you follow the rule of karma for the channel, the universe considers you an angel investor. It's going to send it back to you tenfold for following through. Blessings to all my angel investors. Let's get back into it. Every card going from left to right across the screen in these two these two horizontal lines, um, they represent about one day of time. But what's important to understand is that not in some readings, not each card's energy will line up perfectly with one day of time. So it's important to, to understand that some cases, not in all cases, but in some cases, the timing for the highs and the lows is going to be plus or minus a day of wiggle room here or there. So it's important to follow the sequence of events as outlined by the prediction because that will remain accurate nonetheless. But it looks like we come out of a pretty notable high in February. There's like a high here either on the 29th or here on the 1st of, of, of the month of March. It's an unexpected move. Usually the start card is out of a decline, but it might be that we're creating like a, an evening start here. On like a, a one-year chart, there might be an evening star that forms here on the first. It's possible. We have a, a, an important trough on a one-month scale early on the second and a rally out of that, followed by another decline to a trough late on the second. And then on the third, we have a crest that we sell off from down to and through support. We do a U-shaped reversal below that support, come back and reuse it as support. On the fourth, a decline through multiple support levels. On the fifth, we have a, an overbought crest that we sell off from through multiple support levels into a important trough either on the fifth or more likely on the sixth. On the sixth, there's a period of sideways fluidity, equal amounts of bulls and bears inflow and outflow, and you see some sideways behavior there. Out of that trough around the cusp of, actually, there's a pretty decent amount of sideways rotation from the 6th into the 7th. And then out of that sideways rotation, we have a rally along a diagonal trend line. It ends with a fast sudden move higher and then a breakdown through that diagonal trend line, all taking place there on the 7th. On the 8th, a lot of price change covered, a lot of price change relative to like a one month chart scale, a lot of price change covered on the 8th and an important resistance level highlighted there from which we should be able to trade into and out of, um, utilizing as an entry and an exit. I'll talk about that in more detail in the paid version. On the 9th, we have an important range that's highlighted. It looks like it's the lower end of a range. Excuse me. It's the upper end of a range. So we probably have a trough early in the day, a prominent trough early in the day on the 9th or on the cusp of the 8th, 9th. And then there's an important range highlighted at the upper end of a range on a one month chart scale there on the 9th, a trough early in the day on the 10th, and then a, a peak that forms on the 10th where we move higher through resistance. We stay above it briefly and then we break back down through it. Um, usually when you see the abundance card, it's like a new local high or an important high of some kind. Again, we'll talk about it in more detail in the paid version. That decline back down through the price level on the 10th takes us further into decline on the 11th, out of which there's actually a pretty sharp decline. That's where we have our first universal hexagram kind of correlation there. So a really notable decline there and a lot of opportunity between the 11th and the 12th where we have an ace of cups and an ace of swords. Um, I'll talk about that in more depth in the paid version, but the ace of swords indicates an important price level. Uh, we likely have an, a prominent high. We probably go back and forth between prominent shots and prominent highs here between like the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. And on the 12th, we probably see enough price change that we trade back and forth into and out of that, that resistance level that's highlighted on a multi-day scale. On the 13th, we attempt to establish support early in the day on the 14th. Looks like we have a prominent trough on a one month chart scale and sideways rotation. That sideways rotation ends with a fast sudden move higher. On the 15th, we have a prominent move higher followed by a full retracement. Before we go any further though, let's take a look at January and see how we're doing thus far. Okay, so we had a high, a high correlation on the second. You can see there on the second, we have a high, another high on the, what is this, the eighth. Interesting, so these, well, we went into a trough here, right? We have a correlation to a low significator and a high correlation and we did a high and low and a big move to the upside, high there. 
We go into higher price level on the 8th where we have a cross reading congruency. So I was a little bit off on this high here, I feel like. Well, technically, it is a prominent high. It is a prominent high. I just saw it as a, as a highest high. It's not quite a highest high, but it's a prominent high. And then we have a highest high correlator here on the, on the 9th. And it looks like we're pretty darn close here. You can say the 8th or the 9th was a high. And then we have another high on the 13th. And it looks like it ended up being on the 11th, 11th, 12th. And then we go into this decline, this significant decline to a lowest, a lowest low thus far on the 13th, 14th. And you can see how that was on the 12th. And then again on the 14th, pretty solid. We see another low on the 16th. Looks like that was a little bit off. Although you still would have been able to make money if you if you opened a long position in the midst of the decline on the 16th, as, as indicated. Prominent peak on the 20th. Lowest low on the 22nd. 22nd, 23rd. This is pretty solid. Aside from this one highest high that I was off on where it was really just a prominent peak rather than a highest high. So in order for this to stay pretty close to 100%, I would want to see highs again here towards the end of the month, like the 26th, 27th. A lot of price movement to the upside over the next few days. Uh, but this is a pretty solid reading for, for Bitcoin. And considering that it was created October 25th, 2023 at 2 18 p.m. Eastern Time, where else could you get that accurate of information, that specific of information, that far ahead of time? Nowhere, my friends, nowhere. If you're wondering, nowhere. This is the only place. So if you're interested in the paid version, it's a great way to support the channel. The only place where you get this information and it's super, super valuable. You go to our website, terrafortraders.com, hover over our services, click on SO Meta Posts. Scroll down to monthly subscription, click here to order. And what you're looking for is the Bitcoin subscription. But if you're interested in the paid version of more than just Bitcoin, you want the paid version of any of these other crypto and ticker symbols, uh, Amazon, Google, and NVIDIA as well, then I highly recommend getting the 30 days access to all paid monthly predictions right here. Uh, it gives you access to the paid version of all of those videos every single month. And what you get in those videos is not just the, the timing of the highs and the lows, but also the timing of the best trades as far as what type of chart behavior on a one-day chart scale to look for as far as entry and exit. You get the best trades that we see from like a multi-month standpoint, a multi-year standpoint, any price level information that we get, as well as a comparative performance against the S&P 500 and gold over the same period of March 2020. You can't get it anywhere else, my friends. Super, super underpriced uh, because I want to help out as many people as I can, but I still need to survive and keep the money, the, uh, money coming through so that we can pay our, our team. So uh, much appreciation to everybody that goes and does that. Uh, I definitely know the names of all of you that do that. And let's get back into it. On the 16th, we have a mixed a mixed sideways S type of uh, chart behavior within a channel. So we go from a resistance to a support, back to that resistance, back to the support, creating a sideways S within the channel. There's a pop and drop on the 17th. On the 18th, we have a trough. So out of the drop from the 17th into the 18th, there's an important trough and an unexpected move out of that trough and an important price level that's highlighted on the 17th. Guys, this was a very difficult reading to, to determine highs and lows, but there's like a high, there's a, a prominent high and a prominent low, like right on top of each other within like two or three days of each other right here on the 19th, 20th. It's really hard to determine which one comes first, but there's an important price level there on the 19th, an important resistance level and, a, and an important trough on a one month scale, a prominent peak on the 20th and a sharp, sharp decline, a universal hexagram decline off of that peak to a prominent trough, it looks like. Sideways fluctuating rally out of that trough from the 20th into the 21st, and then a notable decline, it looks like on the 22nd, like a retracement on the 22nd to the downside, uh, a retracement of the movement on, on the 21st to the upside. On the 23rd, we have a, another prominent move higher to a peak midday and then, and, and then a uh, full retracement that moved back down. 24th, a notable move higher on a one month scale. On the 25th, we established support with sideways rotation and then another prominent move higher. On the 26th, multiple failed attempts to break through key resistance and another prominent trough on a one month scale. On the 27th, a lot of price change to the downside and another prominent trough there at a key support level on a multi-day scale, like a one month scale minimum. And then out of a decline on the 28th, we have uh, the end of the decline with a fast sudden move higher taking us to another prominent peak. Uh, volatility on the 29th that ends with a fast sudden move higher. On the 30th, we have sideways rotation, uh, a notable move higher and then more sideways rotation at a higher support level. On the 30th, we have a, a notable move higher through a key resistance on a multi-day scale. We stay above it briefly and then we break back down through it with the same that same price level with a full retracement, creating like an, a capital A in the English language if that price level was the horizontal line through the through A. And then the sneak preview for April, failed attempt to break through key resistance on a one-year chart scale followed by a decline through key support. And there's another prominent low there. It's likely the same low that we've seen is my sense. But we'll talk about that in more detail when we get into the pay version. My friends, that's Bitcoin for March. Oh, and then as far as the highest highs and the lowest lows. So very, very likely a lot of March readings have a highest high here right on the cusp of the last day of trading day of the month of, of February and the first trading day of March. So there's a high there. And then there's very, very likely another high like between the 19th and the 12th. We probably have it more than once. And then we may even see another high here. It's, this is a really tricky area, guys. Really, really tricky area here. So this high on the 1st and this high around the 9th through the 12th, they're either the same price level or it'll be a higher one here around the 9th, uh, 10th, 11th, 12th. On the 19th, 20th, it's hard to say if it's the same high or if it's just a prominent high, but there's also a sharp decline to a lowest low thus far. And then our lowest low for, for the month, I think will take place on the 26th, 27th with a notable move out of it on the 28th. So we have a lowest low thus far on the 2nd-ish, I'll probably revisit it around the 6th, 7th, possibly, and then we revisit it again around the 13th, 14th. And then we have a lowest low either thus far around the 19th, 20th, and then uh, probably a lower one we probably see it most likely it's the lowest low of the month around the 26th 27th and that's bitcoin for march my friends let me know what you think by hitting that like button as always make sure to follow that rule of karma we're counting on you here at uh, tarot for traders that three percent of blessed souls watching this channel that have the integrity inside of them to follow through on the rule of karma which is the whole purpose my, of my life's work and why we're putting this, this stuff out there so much appreciation and love goes out to you blessings to all my angel investors 
I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay tuned if you got the paid version. Okay, so this year, this this in January, you can see we had this rally in early January that offered an opportunity to open up a short position as indicated by the Bitcoin 2024 one year read. It definitely took place and we moved into a decline after meeting key resistance. We, we declined consecutively lower spikes up on the way down. That's the strike guard taking us into a low for the year here on the cusp of January, February. So that's pretty solid. We're going to see slightly lower price. It's either the same low or slightly so, lower price level in March in comparison to the price level that we'll see for the January low. We might have bottomed out here. There's only a few days, like a, like about a week, a little bit more than a week left of of uh, January. So we could be at a low here. It's possible. In any case, whatever that low ends up being around the cusp of January, February, we're very, very likely to revisit that price level again in March. Then it looks like we get pretty close. We very likely have a highest high for the year here in March as well, as indicated by the cross reading congruency, right? The disappointment card here and then the disappointment card here as the March high significator. That's a very strong cross reading congruency. I, I wonder what I should, that, that needs its own kind of its own kind of terminology because it's not just a cross reading congruency, but it's a cross, a cross reading cross placement congruency. It's in the exact same placement in both readings. Interesting. Very, very strong, guys. Very, very strong stuff. And and that high again will, will be like something that we've attempted at least once, probably in the same month of, of March. But it might be that we see it. We've, we've attempted it here in January as well. We'll have to see when we get there. From the standpoint of the cross reading congruencies, it looks like we're somewhere between the energies of March's change and universe card and, and the Ace of Swords and and uh, uh, tower card, and that would make the next low probably just as low in the sequence of events, very, very likely revisiting the same low in the following month based on that. And so sideways sideways behavior, back and forth trading in the early part of the pattern in either April or March, right? Sideways behavior, sideways behavior, ending with a sharp drop, ending with a sharp drop. So, so that's pretty much what we have is we have this sideways kind of behavior where we see a high, we see a low, we see high, low, high, low, high, low, possibly one more time, both of them before this low. And then, and then there's a sharp drop, you know, cursal drop there and another um, sharp drop into a lowest low here. So that plays out pretty solid. This is interesting here. We have this princess of swords and this ace of swords. Very, very likely that these are the same price level. And it may be that we see a higher price level than both of those price levels here on the 10th. It's possible. So it might be that, that, that the price level on the 10th that we break through momentarily is the, is the resistance of the 8th, probably of the 9th, it's the same price level. And then on the 12th, actually it looks like it's on the 11th, the 9th, 10th, 11th. So you could trade around that, right? You could trade when we meet that key resistance on the 8th, you could trade out of it, opening up a short, closing that short on the ninth, early in the morning at a trough, and then opening up a long and closing that at that same price level that we met as resistance on the eighth, somewhere around the end of the day on the ninth or the tenth. When we break through it momentarily on um, around the ninth, tenth, you could then open up a short and close that short after a decline on the eleventh to a notable trough uh, on the twelfth. Sharp, sharp decline on the eleventh. I would, I would close out of the short in the midst of a sharp, sharp decline. I'd probably open there on the eleventh, and I'd probably open up a partial long in the midst of that sharp decline. And then if I have more opportunity on the twelfth, I'd add to that partial long. It actually might be that I closed along at the end of the day on the 11th. What I'm looking for is that same price level resistance again one more time. And then when I see that I, around 11, 12, I would, I would open up a short, which I could close in the morning on the, on the 14th, or I could risk it and I could hold it to the 20th. That's getting kind of risky for a short to hold that long, if you ask me. It's called short for a reason. In the midst of a popping drop on the 17th, I'd probably open a short to close on the 20th. Might have more opportunity on the 20th to open short before that before that sharp universal decline on the 20th. So I'd open up a partial on the 17th and a pop and drop. Add to it if there's more opportunity on the 20th and close it uh, end of day on the 20th at a low, at a lowest low thus far. And then my sense is that we probably have a failed attempt at the same highs that we have here around um, the, the 9th through the 12th. We probably have a failed attempt at those same highs in, in April. So I would pick up um, I would pick up a long position around the 26th, 27th at key support on a multi-day scale. After multiple failed attempts on the 26th at key resistance, there should be a lot of price change to the downside and a lowest low on the 27th, 28th. That's where I would pick up on 27th, 28th. I would pick up a long position in anticipation to close it when we revisit these price levels of the highs here in March sometime in April. It's very interesting because we also have the low significator in a low significator. Oh, no, it's in a high significator. Not quite as strong, but the low significator appears too. So it could be a pretty prominent trough here, especially when you take into account that we have the reverse card. So what makes me think that there might be another high here is that the universal hexagram is associated with the high and we have an association here and a high correlator association. So very likely we decline off of a high into a low there, but there's probably a lot of price change into the low. And I would look to open up a long position there because it's a, a full card opportunity. And that's, oh, and then the overall performance of Bitcoin versus the S&P 500, pretty similar patterns, right? We've got a universal hexagram. On the 11th, we've got universal hexagram on the 11th. We've got pretty sharp decline here on the 21st. We've got universal hexagram here on the 20th. There's a pretty big de deal of decline here somewhere here in, in that week of the 11th through the 15th. Something might be taking place there. But in any case, it looks like they have a very similar pattern. Let's see what the cards have to say. SPY outperforms Bitcoin in the month of March significantly, my friends. And that's Bitcoin for March 2024. Thank you so much for supporting the channel with the paid version of Bitcoin reading. Uh, without you, we couldn't do this stuff. So it's people like you that make this possible. Much love and appreciation to you. And you know where to go. You know what to do. Blessings to all my angel investors. I'll see you guys on the next one.